welcome to the, uh, well, what is the technically first ever Armored Warfare tank review video that I'm going to be doing. And today, I'm going to be taking a look, not at the first two tanks that you normally get, which is the M113 or the PT-76, but we're actually going to take a look at the next series of tanks just after that. Now, first things first, a lot of you are probably going to be confused about how the system works. So what I'm going to do, before I get into the actual review of the tank, I'm going to give you a small overview of how the game works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the dealers section here. Now you've got two dealers. There is no nations in the game. There's no American and German and Russian and French and China. No, 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 no. There's just dealers who buy tanks on the market. Black market, open market, doesn't matter. Now, depending on your play style, depends on what dealer you're going to like. For example, if you're looking for a lot of high alpha damage tanks, they're going to be in Shishkin. For example, you're going to have some legendary tanks like the Chieftain Mark V, the Challenger 1, the T90, the T80, the T72A, the T72, the T64, the T62, uh, the Zal, um, the M109, the Sheridan, the Stingray, you, you, you're going to have a whole bunch uh, uh, of high alpha damage tanks here. Now, what's the trade-off? Well, high alpha damage, just like in water tanks, means longer reloads. Also usually means less uh, uh, um, hit points overall. Now, we're going to take a look at Wolf. Now, Wolf, um, she perceives to see on very tanky tanks, i.e. good overall armor, more than average hit points per tank and so the pat mark 48 pattern the uh qf40 the uh leo a1 the the leo a5 now with the exception of the leopard leopard one now again her tanks also have accuracy not alpha but accuracy for example the leopard one and the leopard one a5 have one of the highest accuracies in the game for tanks. She also gets tank destroyers, for example, like the Dragon 390, like the LAV 300, like the ERC 90 F4, like the Centuro. Do you see what I'm saying, guys? She gets tank destroyers, as where uh, Shishkin gets a uh, 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 high caliber light armor, i.e., good punchy gun. No armor whatsoever. So think Sheridans, Scorpions, Stingrays, XM8s even. It's good, good overall good tanks, but high damage, usually low pen. So think a lot of HE, a lot of Hesh, a lot of heat ammo, uh, not much in the way of AP. Now, as you can see, I do have a couple of premium tanks in both nations. I've got the Zal. From Shishkin, and I've got the T92 from uh, Wolf. I also have a couple of tanks from being a beta tester, which is the Object 155. Now, the Object 155 belongs to no dealer. If you notice, there is no dealer markings behind the tank. If you look behind the tank, you'll see dealer markings. Yellow means it's uh, uh, Shishkin, blue means it's Wolf. For example, the Leopard 1 belongs, uh, uh, I bought it from uh, uh, Wolf. And the T62 I bought from Shishkin. But notice that the Object 155 is a premium tank, hence the name's in yellow. But it doesn't belong to a faction. It doesn't belong to either. This tank was only given to beta testers who tested every function in the game. Okay? So even if you just bought into the game, uh, you won't get the 155. The only way to get the 155 is to log in on day one on Alpha 1 and go to Alpha 2, then Alpha 3, then Alpha 4. It's kind of like the um, beta tester Sherman in World of Tanks. The only Sherman tank I don't own uh, because I wasn't part of the beta team. But uh, there you go. And yes, you know it's Soviet because it has a log. Yes. This is a fun little tank. Now... Before I go into a higher detail of what tank I'm going to review, which, by the way, it is going to be the LAV-150, I'm going to explain some other small features, like the retrofit system and how do you upgrade. Well, first things first, the upgrade section is you click on the upgrades, and you'll get a little pop-up. Now, ammunition is always free to unlock. It will never cost you anything to buy. 
engines will cost you money, uh, technology and proven will cost you money. Okay. However, once you've, put, for example, say you've bought the 25 millimeter auto cannon. Okay, that will then let you allow to, allow you to start researching some of the guns. Now I'm going to go ahead and lower the the sound settings real quick because. Some of the sound effects is pretty loud. Anyway, and so for example, you buy the gun, but you unlock the ammo, you never pay for it. You only pay for it after you've used it. And it's usually a nominal amount. There is no premium ammunition. There is premium consumables, but no premium ammunition. Now, just like in water tanks, you've got a set of consumables. However, there's one set of consumables that's only just for PVE, and that is the low tier field maintenance kit. What this does is it gives you a small, uh, a measure of hit points gives you, uh, and it will restore 20% of your vehicle's hit points and all of the ammunition. Okay, and it's a one-time use that costs 4,000 credits. But like normal, you've got your typical protein bars and energy drinks for your crew, and synthetic oils and stuff like that for your engines, just like in water tanks. You've also got your repair kits, your first aid kits, and your fire extinguishers. Okay, now the retrofit system. This is very unique. This isn't even in water tanks. You've got three sections of technology. You've got armor, firepower, mobility, and technology. Now, as you can see, I already have a chrome-lined barrel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sell that so you can see everything that I've researched. Now, some of these items are going to be grayed out, and they're grayed out for a reason. And that reason is I haven't researched it yet. It's still locked. So in order for me to find out what tanks find it, I can go to... Find schematic mark one and it will show me what tank, which happens to be the M60 pattern. Now I do have the M60 pattern, and as you can see, I'm in the process of uh, of researching it. That's how you unlock the retrofits. Now, in PVE, there are boss tanks, they're yellow in name, okay? And they have a high they, they have a percentage chance, I wouldn't say a high percentage chance, but they have a percentage chance of dropping a one-time use schematic. For example, say it dropped um, chrome line barrel number three. It would be a one-time thing, and I'd only be able to apply it to one tank. Not necessarily the tank that destroyed the boss, but just one tank. Okay, guys? And it's usually rolled at random as to who gets it. Now I recently unlocked the crumb lining barrel from the uh, um, M1 Leopard, and what it does is it gives me a 3.3% uh, increase uh, uh, to damage and a 10% increase to my accuracy. I've also got experiment propellant, 5% damage, advanced MRS, 5% uh, normalization, which means there's a higher chance that my normal shells will penetrate, they won't ricochet or bounce, and advanced thermal sleeving, reload time reduced by 6%. So you can choose to, to tailor the tanks to how you are. Unlike in water tanks where it's a set limit, for example, a set hard six second reload per shot. So even if your gunner does have rapid reload and all these other perks and abilities that only shaves off a percent of a percent of a percent, it's still roughly going to be that five to six seconds. Well, here in Armored Warfare, that's not the case. For example, my Zao, my tank destroyer's normal reload rate is eight and a half seconds per shot. Mine's down to six seconds. I shaved two and a half seconds completely off of my tank, off the tank destroyer. And it shows, especially in PvP, when I'm shooting at another Zal, and I know he doesn't have the build I do. Because he's firing, I'm counting eight seconds. I'm going, you know, I'm hitting him, you know, almost two to one ratio. So, again... You've also got technologies. The technologies, let's see this one, uh, crew skills plus 5%. Good for reloading, uh, uh, um, driving, aiming, things like that. Uh, enhanced sight interface, vision range is increased, and penalty reductions for smoke and various things is reduced. Uh, augmented optics, vision range is increased by 5%. Uh, security control package, capture rate by 10%. And branded Kevlar wiring, crew skills by 3%, penalty and reduction of 8%. <laughs> so that's not a bad little one to have right there, is the branding wire, especially if you plan on going passive scout. If you plan on going passive scout, you've also got to have the right tank commander. Now I'll explain the tank commanders here in a bit, but what I'm going to be doing right now is because I use my LAV-150 as more of a uh, um, flanking and, and, and adding DPS. 
So, it's a choice between the chrome line barrel for me or the advanced thermal sleeve to reduce that hefty reload. Because this tank is an auto loader, it does have a, a very hefty reload. So I'm probably thinking of going with the therm with the chrome line barrel. So there we go. Chrome line barrel is installed. Now let's look at the tank commander real quick. I have the uh, probably the only female tank commander in the game that I know of, which she is. And uh, Sabrina Washington, her view range, she's level 3, and it's taken me quite a while to get her to level 3. But her vision range is increased by 10%, regardless of what tank she's in. Her aim speed is increased by 10%, regardless of what tank she's in. And the camo factor is improved by 10%, regardless of what tank she's in. So if I'm in a light tank that has a camo factor of, te uh, of 90 Plus that 10%, that bumps it up to almost 94 to 95% camo rating. So there's a high chance you're not going to spot me if I wanted to go passive scout. So, now, there's also other tank commanders that increase the reputation. There's this tank commander, he increases the uh, crew experience gained. So if you want to power level your crew, you know, use him. If you want to power level the tank itself to move on in the dealership, you use him. If you want to, uh, if you want to be better... At destroying modules, uh, i.e. good for tank destroyers, you'll want to go with Philip. Victor, I've just got him. Uh, he cost me 100,000 credits. Some of these tank commanders you'll have already have unlocked through um, doing the beta and various other things. And other tank commanders you can buy with in-game credits and in-game gold. Now, of course, I'm going to be using Sabrina. Now, let's take a look at the crew. The crew itself doesn't even, hasn't even ranked up yet. Now, unlike World of Tanks, you can also change the image of what your crew looks like for free. This is completely free. It will not cost you a penny. See? Notice it didn't cost me a penny. See? Not a penny. You can even rename your tank commander with a, from a, a select list of names. It will not cost you a penny and it will not change their stats. Okay? Now, ammunition choice, we've got uh, APFS DS, armor piercing, fin stabilizer, discarded sailor. Or we've got APG 32U uh, um, Shep hey, Sheppy armor piercing, uh, 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 semi armor piercing, high explosive incendiary. Now, I currently have a hefty loadout of fin stabilizer because I like that uh, 92 millimeters of penetration. It will wreck a lot of mainline battle tanks from the sides and rear. Uh, and of course, if I come across a light tank, I tend to just load up the the, the sap. And uh, wreck them as well. And has a high chance of setting them on fire, of course. Whereas where the fin stabilizer does not. Now, in fact, you know, I'm going to even out that loadout real quick. Of course, you can do that by... Because I do come across main battle tanks more than I do uh, uh, light tanks. But that should, that should work. Okay. Now, I'm going to be doing a PvE mission here. But uh, 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 the tactics for PvP will be different, and because they'll be different, I will be probably doing those in a separate video. So we're going to jump into a PvE contract. Ooh, a medium contract immediately. Nice. Good good payout. Bonus for difficulty, plus 25. Plus 25, plus a 15,000 uh, reward. The higher the, the difficulty setting, the more money and credits and EXP you make. Also, the higher chance that there's going to be a boss. Okay. Now, bear in mind, my, my light tank has bugger all for armor, so I've got to use stealth. I've got to wait, I've got to find for them to, you know, turn, show me their sides, their rear, and that's when you nail them. Okay, Operation Ricochet. Uh, we have an LAV-150, myself, a Leopard 1, a T-62, another Leopard 1, and an LAV-150. So we could get a little wolf pack thing going on here, if the guy's even there. Um, sadly, there's still a lot of players who, who proceed to just go AFK in a PvE thinking, oh, it's only PvE, one guy can handle like a bajillion tanks. That's not true. It's not true in the slightest. And it's a nighttime map, which is even better. Now, you're probably thinking, what's with the stretchiness? I've changed the FOV slider in my game. As you can see, it's set for 110. I'm going to push it down to 90. Because some people get uh, really motion sick at that. So there you go, we've got it set for 90 FOV, which is what I normally have it at for, for Heroes and Generals Blue and various other games. Blue Company is down. Capturing the port is up to you now. Black Company, stand
Stand by for new intel. Our airstrike team is en route to destroy cartel contraband. Intel suggests it's hidden amongst emergency relief supplies. See if you can find the contraband before everything is destroyed. Voter, Willie Pete. Now I'm gonna load up some Willie Pete. Real quick. Ammo up! That looks like one of ours. Keep moving. I'm gonna let them deal with the tanks. Again, I my job is to do the secondary. And occasionally do see now. You'll know when they're in range because their, their names will go from a dull red to a bright red. That's when you know you it's possible you can get a shot on the target. Good hit! Now, destroyed. Good hit! Target destroyed! Now do you see what Wally Pete does? Target hit! Load WP! It just decimates lightly armored tanks like these pack 40s which are just armor uh, wheeled tank destroyers and that's why i like wally p it is one of the identify target hostile pc you don't necessarily have to pen to do damage good hit see the module damage direct hit target eliminated Load WP. So you're supposed to tap fire like bam, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam, and only go full, full auto when the the targets at uh, uh, CQB ranges. But it, this is a fun tank. It's fast in 49 kmh on what would be considered moderate, well, light terrain. Um, I wouldn't call it moderate. Identify terrain. target. Hostile PC. Hostile personnel carrier. Target hit. Contraband. Good job. We'll take that one out. Now, if you want to reload, you just double tap the number and hit C. Identify. Hostile PC. Just as I'm reloading. Go into the river. Identify target. Hostile PC. Ground direct hit. Incoming Artie. Target destroyed. Artillery missed me. That looks like one of ours. Keep moving. Voter, Willie Pete. And as you can see, this is what Willie Pete does. It just wrecks modules. It it's a module killer. That's why I like like it. It's good ammo to fire at light tanks. Uh, and um, so even some main battle tanks, if you can get past their spaced armor on their tracks, it contraband. Good job. We'll, we'll do take some that one out. Serious damage. Now here, you're gonna have to be very careful here. Okay, we've got a leopard going for the uh, the last case, so that's fine. I'm now I'm gonna concentrate. Load sabo. Load some sabo now because we're coming up against some Sheridans and some other. Heavily armored tanks. Identify target. Hostile PC. Target hit. Contraband. Good job. Mission complete. Good work. The civilians will be happy. Penetrated. Good hit. Ricochet. Good hit. Loader, Sabo. Let's load a Sabo. There's that Abbott. Leopard's probably going to go after the Abbott. That guy's taking a smack or two. Again, see what he's doing? He's trying to be a very aggressive light tanker. And it, it may work. It may work. See, now he's reloading. Again, this is the problem. Because they block your shot because they're idiots and don't realize, oh wait, this is a team game. You know, it's a seagull game at times. You know, mine, 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 mine. Seriously. Proper full on seagull. See, now this guy's going to try and take on two pack 90s by himself. Go on, go for it, mate. Go on, watch him. I'll, I'll sit back and watch him wreck you. Good hit. Ricochet, no effect. Direct target destroyed. Enemy destroyed. 
destroyed. And no, I wouldn't have done that normally. Just Order, Sabo. Gonna load up some Sabo now. For for Magrak. Now we're gonna capture the port and move You're on. You're almost in. there. Helicopters are en route to support you. Nice, we're capturing the base now. Let's hope this leopard doesn't try and cut me off. Here we go. Now you'll notice that the base cap rate increases because light tanks get a passive bonus to capping faster. See? Because there's two of us in here. Three, two, one. Mission complete. And that was a PVE mission, guys. I only took one hit that time. We have control of the docks and cartel ships. It'll nice. take some time to sort through the contraband here, but you've done your part. Enjoy your payday. Enjoy your payday. And you get a nice little cut animation here. There's some helicopters landing. They're Soviet. Because it's the Middle East, so you expect a lot of Soviet tanks. T, uh, T-62s, T-64s, uh, T-90s, T-72s, T-72As. A lot of export tanks, basically. And, well, pretty much that was it in PvE. Let's see if we can do that in PvP, shall we? And we're back from our PvE campaign. And as you can see, look at that great big chunk of EXP that my uh, crew and my captain to get now you're looking at these thinking what the hell is this this is the progression you're making in the, the in wolf's uh, uh faction uh basically uh we gained a little bit of our, let me go back to that we gained a little bit of artillery uh bmp recon vehicle experience and we've already maxed out our american and leopard tanks so we didn't gain any exp there so because you're noticing these little yellow orange bars, that's your experience that you have in those tanks. Now, if you notice, I've actually met the conditions required from the Leopard main battle tank press recruits uh, in order to get the QF40. What's stopping me is if I go to my Leopard tank real quick, you'll notice there's this progressive bar up here. This is what's known as your acceptability with the with the mercenary with, with, with the, the, the 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 dealer the more the dealer likes you the more you can progress down their ranks so even though i've got everything unlocked for the the leopard as you guys have seen i still have to impress the dealer even more to unlock the qf in, in order for me to buy and use the qf40 which is a, an actual weird tank uh, of course, it gets the armor retrofit slot that you can unlock, and it gets the air induction uh, pre-cleaners Mark One. Nice. It increases acceleration and hull traverse speed. That'll be good for some uh, light tanks that need a little bit more zip in their get. Looking at you, T92. But anyway, we're going to be going back at the LA LA150. So now let's check it out in PvP, shall we? Hi guys, and we're back on pipelines. As you can see. This is a tier 3 max game, which is looking good. We have a Leopard 1 and, and a pair of two T-62s with a Scorpion. And an Object 3155. Nice there, Dust Viking. The enemy have three Leopards so and two Scorpions. So we've got to be really careful with it because I've got some nice Borker Bulldogs. So we're going to have to see if we can't take them out. Plus the Leopard and one of the Scorpions is platooned. So we're going to have to be really careful here. Now, what I like to try and do, because it's a neutral cap. Am I the only light tank here? No, we've got a pair of walker Driver, bulldogs. Driver, crank it. Affirmative. Gunner, scan for target. And we've got an Affirmative. X. Driver, X. move out. Whoa. That was kind of weird. Control's kind of locked up on me there for a second. There's a bit of a blooper for you. Oh, yeah, so as you can see, we're going to flank on this way. We've already got a Mark 48 pattern lit up. Driving through some shallow water. You can drown your tank in the game. So that's just a heads up for you guys. You can drown your tank. And that's not cool. It's never fun. 
Now I like to go wide, wide. We actually have a strong platoon. Nice, we got a, th a three man platoon. They have a two man platoon. Now we could try and cap this out, which I don't advise. I, because you just gave your position away there, uh, XM8, uh, XM80. So I like to go wide again and use the view range and the camo factor for my tank commander and put her to good use. So again, I'm using cover. And unlike World of Tanks, every tank comes with a Sixth Sense perk. If you see, you know, spotted, move. You've been spotted. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. You've been spotted, so bloody move. Don't risk it, don't chance it, just move. Now me, I'm going to be careful here. Because there is an enemy scorpion right there. But I need to get into a more viable position. Now, notice down here you'll see a camo factor right behind me. Let me move my webcam real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, you can see this little yellow bar here. That's your camo factor. What that's doing is telling you the chances you're going to be spotted. Now, we just lost that guy because he just got devastated. Now, please, Scorpion, don't pop out. Again, I'm using these rocks for cover. Identify target. Hostile. Tank. Yeah, that's a Mark 48 pattern. Load WP. Now, I'm loading some WP because I know I can't pen him, but the HE splash should do some damage. Destroyed. That was close. Load WP. Now he can't see me. Do you see? Because I haven't been lit up yet. He can't see me. They hit us hard. Direct hit. Pull him back. Pete. See, three light tanks just successfully pushed back a pattern. Round destroyed. Penetrated. He's dead. See, guys? You can do it. Loader, WP. Granted, I took a whack, but do you see? Light tanks, if they wolf pack together, can take out main battle tanks. You can do it, guys. Okay. So, oh, that was a good shot. No, I'm not going to get a shot on him. So, I'm going to, again, I'm going to hold position. Oh, our Mark 48 took a big old whack there. Okay, so we've got an enemy tank there. Looks like a scorpion. It is. He's clearly behind cover. So, I'm not going to be able to get him. Now they are getting the cap, but that's fine, because we've still got plenty of time. Where's the scorpion? Come on. Okay, it looks like it's the uh, object 155 in the cap. I'm going to stick around and try and protect Identify this. Target. Hostile, tank. Of course. Ah, of course, I got spotted. Yeah, that Walker Bulldog got lit up. Okay, so the cap's been reset. Scorpion.
Identified. Pop tank. Voter, Willie P. Now remember, you've got to shoot with a Wally P because it's slower. Ammo. Identify target. Hostile tank. Direct it. Yeah, they nailed us. 155 got us. Good shot. Oh well, guys. Did my best. But just to prove a point, light tanks, when grouped up, can actually do it, guys. I just want to know what the hell our, our team on the freaking other side of the map just did just sitting there doing jack fucking shit when really they saw that both the leopards were on our side of the map. They should have pushed up. Seriously. Learn from your mistakes, guys. I'm a light tank. I can't hold a fucking army off by myself. But three of us did take out that Mark 48 pattern. So you can do it, guys. So all in all, what do I think of the LA, LAV-150? It's a fun little tank. Um, after about six or seven matches, you're going to learn your play style in the tank. You're going to find the right commander for you. Of course, I prefer using this commander. I prefer using Sabrina. She's perfect for light tanks and tank destroyers, for example. She's actually the commander in my Zhao. The Zhao, of course, being the, the uh, uh, Chinese uh, t uh, wheeled tank destroyer from the late 80s, I believe. Um, she's a good commander, and I've got a good crew on there. And what can I say? The Zhao's going to be, it, it's going to be, is a good tank. Look forward to seeing a review on that tank. But most importantly, guys, this was a review on the LAV-150 light, tr uh, uh, light wheeled tank destroyer, uh, tank destroyer, light wheeled tank, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. And also, in the comments down below, tell me what tank you want to see next. Okay, guys? You tell me what tanks you want to see next, and I'll do my best to do it for you. Let's see. What did we unlock a little bit more? Oh, wheel tank, dest wheel destroyers, recon vehicles, and BMP development. Nice. Very good. And we banked 30,000 credits. Not too bad. Not too shabby. Again, check that out. One more good game, and the crew will get to rank two. It's not that e it's not that hard to level up your, cu your, your your crew and your tanks, guys. Bear in mind, you cannot swap crew out from tank to tank to tank. Each crew goes with a specific tank. Um, so, guys, thanks for watching this video. And until then, keep your shows fine, keep your enemies dying, your cover commander is out, and I'll see you guys in the next one, my friends.